know some of you know me and, and you know you watched some some events this past spring and, and you had questions and, and we didn't have an opportunity to talk yes I, um, as you know we had a, a, a vote for speaker on May 1st um, and I think by all accounts I'm not telling you anything you don't know yeah I did have the votes to win it I had to put together a coalition to do it um, but I had put together the I did it and we had the votes to win. Ultimately, guys, here, here's the thing, um, and, and it was just a decision I made while we were in Democratic caucus. Um, because of certain stances I've taken over the years on, on, on some social issues, uh, you either love me or hate me in Annapolis. That's pretty much what it comes down to. Um, there's not a lot of room for compromise. You, you're either in the club where you aren't, so to speak. And and I'm fine with my choices. I, uh, I sleep well every night. Um, not, you know, we'll, we'll leave it at that. I sleep well every night. I, I did what I thought was right. But there are prices to pay when you do. You're, you're not always the most popular and the, you know, the most welcomed in, into all groups, and, and I understand that as well. But the bottom line was, as an African-American, it was important, I had been down, when I first got to it, Rashawn and I went to Annapolis together in the 94 election, 95 was our first session. Uh, there was one African-American chairman, Pete Robbins. And then through the course of time, I, I got appointed chairman in 2003. Me and Chairman Robbins overlapped in 2000 for the 2003 session, but he was, um, he was transitioning. Uh, and, and so he passed later that year. And so for the last 16 sessions, it had just been me. And so when I looked around the room and I saw the various groups that made up the Democratic constituency that I'd seen the growth and, 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 and so forth, but I looked at it. When I first got down there 25 years ago, there was one African-American chairman. 25 years later, there's still one African-American wow. chairman. I noticed that the other positions, um, as a community, we were always good enough to be deputy this, assistant that, the number two, the number three, but never the number one. And, and I had been thinking about that for a while. I didn't get, when I got in this race, I knew what I had to do to win it. And, and I had been thinking about it as far back as 2012. So I knew exactly what it needed to do. And that was, I was gonna have to, because of circumstances, I was gonna have to partner with members of the Republican Party to be able to, to get them together. And in any event, to fast forward, the bottom line was I had the votes to win. We, you all read about that four hour marathon uh, uh, Democratic caucus meeting, and it became clear to me that I could get the win and I could take the battle and, 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 and you know, the history and all of that, but it wasn't going to work. It, it was clear in that room that I was going to be battling every step of the way. And, you, you know, I, I remember something you said, Pastor Jenkins, when, um, when Angela also works at one, you had mentioned that all the how she handled with grace and dignity, all, all the arrows and slings, and she didn't fight back. I'm not quite where this also works <laughs> is. I, 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 I don't start fights, but boy, do I like to hit. And, and, and so I, I was, I felt myself relishing, like you know, the Capitol Heights had kicked in, like, <laughs> Let, let's do this. But as, as, a, as a community, I, I, I mean, I knew as, as the first black speaker, this thing had to work. I had to be successful, or it would be difficult for those who were trying to follow me. That's something that, you know, you know, a lot who've been in the position, you know, of being the first, they know they have to make it successful um, for those to follow. And so when, when we were going back and forth, ultimately Adrian Jones' name, you know, when they start talking about alternatives and they, they put forth Adrian's name. Adrian came two years after I did to Annapolis. She's been there nearly as long, 23 years. We, she, myself, and, and, and Talmadge uh, Branch, the, the majority whip from Baltimore City, we had been a part of Speaker Bush's leadership team um, representing the African-American community issues down there. We had all been very close. Adrian, just a week before that election, she was willing to step aside for me um, to, to, you know, to, to support a common goal. And so it made it easier for me to do the same um, when, when she was in that position. So 
that took longer than 30 seconds, <laughs> uh, but all the memories started coming back. But I wanted you all to know how that transpired, how, how that went down. And like I said, I could have taken the bow and, and so forth, but I saw it being a mess. The, the, the resistance, it, it would have been very polarizing. Some of us on one side, some on the other, and there was no bridging that. Not, not with me, with Adrian. I, I think, Speaker Jones, we have that opportunity to be able to work together because ultimately it's not about Derek Davis or Adrian Jones or any individual members. It's about you, it's about our collective community, and that's what's important to me. So that's what happened. <laughs> Derek, uh, on behalf of all of our members in the community, uh, we want to thank you for your courage uh, that you've shown during that process. And many of us were uh, obviously out here pulling for you. There wasn't much we could do because this was an internal vote, not one at the, at the polling stations. But uh, we would also encourage you to continue to do what you're doing, continue to represent this county the way you have, because we, we see you still as a star and still see you as someone uh, that the future holds uh, a lot of bright things. And uh, again, we just congratulate you for your courage and what you've done. Let's give them another round of applause. <laughs> One last thing, you can be real proud of your county executive. When, when she, she and I saw, yes. and, and it, it was funny, when, when, it, when I first, you know, when it was first going, and, and you know, I had some of the guys, and we were sitting around, you know, how guys do high five, yeah, we're gonna, you know, we're gonna do this. And then after the guys left, I was like, boy, I don't know how I'm gonna do this thing, you know, full panic, it kicked in, and, and my phone just happened to ring around that time, and, and, and the pastor, I, I, you know what I thought it was. So, you know, I looked up, and the name said, Angela also works. So, you know, fine intervention, you know, and, and she said, come over to the house, we need to talk. And, and so, you know, we sat down and talked, and I told her, she said, I'm with you, I'm gonna do what I can to help you. And, and I asked her not to, she'll tell you, I said, don't. I said, this is gonna be highly political, you got a bright future ahead of you, and if you get into this, they're gonna come back after you, you got a government to run, you got your own future, you know, I can handle it. And she said, no, I don't care what they do, I, I'm, I'm in it with you, and she, Everything that I told her was gonna happen came and she didn't flinch. She, um, she you know, she, they pushed her and she pushed back. Um, uh, gently. <laughs> she pushed back. So I just only tell that story to say, we got a very strong leader. Don't let the niceness and the heat size, and don't, don't let all that fool you. She, she, she is a powerhouse. She has a bright future and definitely somebody we can be proud of. Thank you. I think a lot of people